Hey guys, my name is Jonathan Silva, trainer at Pragmatic Works, and welcome back to another video here looking at some of the features and insights within Power BI Desktop. For this video, we're gonna focus on building a calendar or date table using M in the Power Query Editor. Now you might be asking yourself, well, why do I need a specific table that is just a list of dates? Well, having this date table or this calendar table is important. It's, it's imperative for us to have if we wanna be able to use any of our time intelligence functions within Power BI Desktop. We wanna have a seamless list of every single date available within our data model for us to be able to pull functions and calculations like year over year averages, month to date, year to date, rolling month averages, rolling quarter averages, just so we can go ahead and do those calculations within all the reports that we wanna have. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and build that date table or calendar table with our M language in the Power Query Editor. Now, just so we have a little bit of background, there are a lot of ways of making these date tables or calendar tables. We can do it with DAX in the Power BI Desktop. We can do it multiple different ways in the Power Query Editor. What we're gonna look at today is just one of those ways in order to build this date table. Now, this is the way that I tend to use with my students when I'm teaching either our, our individual classes or our larger boot camps, because it does help explain along the process why we're creating these different variables and how we are going ahead and set up our data model to be able to use in the future. All right, so let's go ahead and hop into Power Query Editor and take a look at starting our calendar or our date table. All right, so here in the Power Query Editor, we have to go ahead and take our very first step of building our calendar table. And what we need to do is simply start a new table. So with our home tab or home ribbon selected, we are going to select enter data. And by selecting enter data, we can go ahead and build out a blank table. And so what we want to do is change their first column here. And we're going to start using this as our start date. Okay, and so when we have our start date labeled, well, for this column, we need to have our first cell the exact day that we want to start our calendar on. So in this case, we can go ahead and say we're going to start on January 1st of 2010. Now, starting on January 1st, 2010 means that we want to build out our calendar or our date table with that first day and include every single day within our entire calendar all the way up until today. So we can have a rolling total of everything we want to use for our advanced calculations. So let's go ahead and change up the name of our table as well. We're going to just simply call this our calendar. If I select OK, we can now see that we have our start date column and our first day of our calendar. So the next step is we're going to go ahead and select our end date. And we're going to define this end date using our M language. Now, in order to do that, we have to insert a new column on top of this table. So in order to do that, we are going to go ahead and select add column. And then we are going to use a custom column. Now, with this custom column, we are going to call this new column our end date. And the M formula we are going to use for our end date is our date from our date dot from and our date time dot local now. And so what this does, we have to close out our parentheses for our local now and our closing for our full formula there. What this does, date from, date dot from returns a date from the given value. Well, the given value that we wanna input into this is our value of today, our today's date. Okay, so we have um, local now, we're just simply choosing today's date and today's time to have our end for our full calendar. And so what we're gonna do is go ahead and hit okay. And you can see today's date, we are now working out today's October 14th, 2021. And so we now have our start and our end date. Before we move on from here, it's very important that we go ahead and change the data type of our end date here to match our start date. We wanna make sure that Power Query Editor knows that we are working with dates. So if we select up, the icon here, we're going to go ahead and change up the, the data type to date. The next step is to go ahead and add a column for the date ranges between the start date and end date. 
So just as we did before, we're gonna make sure we're in the add column tab or ribbon at the top, and we're gonna go ahead and select custom column. And I'm gonna call this column our date column. And so again, we want to have, and for this specific column, the date ranges between our start date and our end date. So what we're gonna input is a list of all the, the numbers between our start and our end. In order to go ahead and have a list with our M, we're gonna use our curly bracket to start. And we are gonna use our number dot from, and we are gonna do our number dot from our start date use two dots there, two decimals there to have our next setting for our list. And again, our number dot from, and then we're gonna use our end date. We're gonna insert that. We're gonna close out the parentheses there. We're gonna close out our curly bracket as well. So we defined our list. And if we go ahead and select okay, we now see our third column. Okay, so what we can use there is from our number dot from, what it does is converts a date into numbers so we can get a list of those numbers. That, then we're gonna go ahead and convert that back into the date, data type in order to fully have everything that we need for all the dates between our start and our end date. So what we wanna do before we go ahead and convert it is we're gonna go ahead and expand this new column into all of our rows. And so what we see here is we have all of the count of days between our start and end date. And so what we wanna do now is go ahead and change up our data type here. So we can convert this list of days to all the dates in between. And remember in this case, I'm gonna click out real quick, dates can be represented in numbers just like in Excel. So that is by, we have a count of days again between our start and our end date, which is why you see this number increasing every single time. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that data type conversion real fast and notice what happens. We now see all of the days between our start date, January 1st, 2010, and our end date, October 14th, 2021. We have every single day within our calendar within that entire time frame. So our very last step to, to close out this just date column here that we have is we can go ahead and get rid of our start and our end dates. So if I could control click, right click there, we can remove those columns. All right, now that we have our date column all set up, we're not really done because if we really wanna have a calendar table or a date table that's set up that we can use all of our time intelligence functions on, we wanna make sure that we have all the other columns available to us to be able to do those time intelligence functions, right? We also wanna have in this case, we wanna have a column here that could be labeled year, right? We also want a column that we could use for our quarter, right? We wanna be able to maybe have a column for our month, right? We wanna be able to use all of these in order to be able to drill down deeper into our data when we bring everything back to Power BI Desktop and do our visualizations. So let's go ahead and create those columns. So the first column we want to do, create is our year column. Now there, again, there are a lot of ways for us to create this year column. I'm gonna show two different ways in order to create these columns by building off of our date column. The first one, and in my opinion, the easiest way to do that is go ahead, if we duplicate this column here, and we do a transform on this column, we can go ahead and parse out the year from each row within our column. So we'll just simply parse out 2010, and then as we build into 2011, 13, or 12, 13, 14, and so on and so forth throughout this entire column. So in order to do that, if we right click on our column header there, and we come down to transform, we wanna transform the year and only return the year. And when we do that, we again see that we now have a column full of the only the year that is parsed out from our date column. We need to go ahead and make sure that we change our title there, column header there, to year. All right, so that's one of them. Let's go ahead and make our quarter in the exact same way. We're gonna go ahead and duplicate our date column once again. 
we are going to do another transform by right clicking, selecting transform, choosing quarter, and simply quarter once again. And in this case, we can go ahead and change this to our quarter column. Very simple, very easy, very fast. I like this one because I tend to be a right click type of person. I like to be able to have ease of access, everything all in the same place. However, you might be different. You might want to make a new custom column so you really see the, the, and the engine running behind all of these uh, creation of these columns. You wanna understand how everything works. So we can go ahead and do that as well. For our, our next new column, we wanna create a month column. We can go ahead and insert a new custom column. And, and then use the RM language in order to create that column. So if we go in again at using add column, we're gonna select custom column. We're gonna call this column our month. And we are gonna use the function date dot month. Okay, and then we have to say, where are we pulling the date, the month from, right? We're gonna pull it from our date column. Close that out. And now we have everything we need. Select OK. And now we have the numerical value of each month within our data set. As we go all the way through, we have, now we can see our quarters changed over. Once we hit the month of April, and we could see the month number is also being represented there. Nice and simple, very nice to see. All right, so let's go ahead and also insert our month name column, because maybe we want to be able to view our month, not simply as the numerical value, but also in the month name. Now, before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and change up my month and make sure we have that as a whole number, because as we do our, our functions there, we wanna make sure everything's matching there as well. And so again, to insert our month name, let's go ahead and do it as a custom column once again. So I'm gonna, again, add column tab or ribbon at the top, select custom column. And in this case, I'm gonna call this my month name. Now for our month name, we are gonna use our date dot month name. And we're gonna say, we're gonna pull that once again from our date column. Closing that out, selecting okay. And there we have it. Now, one of the things again, we need to make sure we're doing is we need to tell Power Query Editor that this column is a list of text values. So go ahead and select text for our data type. And you can see it says January all the way through February, March, April, and so on and so forth. Now for our very last column, what if we don't want the full name listed for that column? What if we want an abbreviated month value? Well, we can go ahead and do the exact same thing here using our custom column. So if I select custom column, I'm gonna change this column name to short month name. All right, this is our abbreviated month that we're gonna use. So the custom column formula I'm gonna use is text.start, okay? And I'm gonna choose our month name, insert that, and now what I can do is I can say, how do I want to start this new column? Well, I wanna start the column by only using the first three values of the month name column. And if I go ahead and close out the parentheses there, we now can see that we have an abbreviated version or a short month name for all of the months. And what we simply did was we chose to keep the first three of each month name. Very simple, very quick, exactly what we wanna see. Now remember, we chose to use our uh, calendar or date table here. We chose to create it here in the Power Query Editor as opposed to doing it in the Power BI desktop with DAX. Now, one of the things that we really like to do is why we're now making this in the Power Query Editor instead of DAX is because we have a couple different, you know, better performance um, optimizations with using the Power Query Editor. We can really enhance our data model. We can have better performance with our, our engine as we do ever, as much as possible within the Power Query Editor. We start doing things with DAX, we're adding on to our model a little bit further. And in the future, depending upon how many rows and columns we have within our data model, it could impact our performance. All right, well, thank you for joining me today. Hopefully you have a little bit more insight into building out a date or cal calendar table here in the Power Query Editor using our M language to help you generate your data model and really optimize your performance level in the future. And before we leave, make sure you 
Like and subscribe below so you get more content, not just from me, but from all of us here at Pragmatic Works, where we can help you out with not just virtual mentoring, uh, our on-demand learning platform, and all the other options that we have available to you, but just general information, right? We're here to help. We're here to guide. We're here to teach. Thank you. See you next time.